Marcus. How's it going? Good. What's up, dude? Marcus, uh, you and I met uh, a couple years ago now at a conference in Pittsburgh and have not seen each other since. <laughs> so my name is Marcus Clark. I live in Austin, Texas, and I'm a fine artist. It feels very general right now because I'm hopping between mediums, uh, but my day job is also a graphic designer. I feel like I'm transitioning right now, but it's like weird to say that because I don't know if I've ever had like a normal line, maybe since I met you three years ago, like everything has been transitioning for the past three years. My art practice really started to take shape whenever I graduated college and the art wasn't like a grade and an assignment anymore, but then it was like something I just did. So I had an internship whenever I first moved to Austin about a year ago doing illustration and I'm not an illustrator at all. It was just like kind of life sucking, even though like the agency was great and I love the people who were there. I needed a creative outlet from this creatively draining work, which ended up being Zion's Window, which was an exhibition that I had back in January that was this big uh, LED wall that was like supposed to represent a stained glass window, representing uh, this feeling of heaven on earth. And that, that whole thing was like freaking crazy. I remember being in church one day and just thinking of stained glass and how that's used as a literacy tool um, in the medieval age. Even though we can read, we're almost in this age where there's like so much information being thrown at us that we're exhausted from it. And I went to a coffee shop the next day and was like, I have this idea, it's in my head, it's bugging me, I just need to get it out. So I like sketched the entire day. And as I was like leaving this coffee shop, I was talking to the owner and he was like, hey, by the way, I actually have this gallery space for artists who have art that feels way too big for them to do, so they don't have to pay it to use a space. All, all I ask is that the idea is scary. And I'm like, I have a scary idea. <laughs> and then launching a Kickstarter, which was like the scariest thing ever. I needed to raise $5,000. For me, I launched it and I had two of my buddies back it in the first night and I had $25. And so I was freaking out and I was crying and I was like, my art's never gonna happen. And so I went on my contact list on my phone and texted every single person I had their phone number. Ended up getting the funds in 10 days, which at the beginning of the campaign did not think that would happen. Then I had this like stage between funding and the actual art show of building this entire thing out, making this huge uh, uh, constructed Gothic arch window learning how to bend wood, which is not easy, working with the vendor to rent a huge LED wall, and like actually making the video art that goes inside of it. Because I had this concept, but I didn't actually, like I got it fully funded and had so many people back me before I even had this video created. And then I had the art show on February 8th, and I just had so much of my community come out and support me, which felt so good. Um, I mean, I'd only lived in Austin for eight months at that point, but I had 150 people show up. It felt very amazing, very validating that I could be an artist because my degree, even though I went to art school and did all this creative stuff was in graphic design and advertising, not really fine art. And uh, like, it was just like this itching coming out of me and the fact that like, people do care about the work that I make. I can't be successful because people are hearing out what I have to say through visual art. Um, that was super impactful. Like, some really good days like, I have so much free time and I'm gonna learn all the new things and then like super loaded is like this is the worst thing I've ever gone through. Yeah. Like we're all going through like kind of this season of collective trauma which is weird and interesting but we can all sympathize in it together. I think for my creative practice which would not have expected um, coming out of quarantine has been just a lot more of just inspiration from the outdoors and so I mean with quarantine I found myself like Everything's closed. Restaurants are closed. Movie theaters are closed. Everything's closed. The only thing that's open are the parks around here, um, the hiking trails. And so really leaning onto those for just like <laughs> any sort of thing that's not my house. Here in uh, Central Texas, we have a lot of limestone cliffs. For me, like my interest has peaked with like rocks and geology and how those have been like carved over time and like just like seeing like that time and how huge these rocks are and like how huge nature is as like a pathway to see God and like how big he is. I'm in like this really weird transition place of like how do I incorporate that thing which feels very different from everything else my art practice has been into it in a way that feels harmonious. At least for me um, in this kind of season it's been a lot of like less like making and more just kind of gathering maybe it's just kind of seeing in new ways 
um, like that's interesting to me about the the rock stuff. Maybe you're taking the time to to um, really notice more in new ways than you would have before, and maybe you're not making as much, but you're you're kind of gathering. Everyone's just kind of like intaking all this stuff right now. Yeah, um, and I'm excited to see what you know a lot of artists do and what you do. Okay, tea or coffee? Coffee all the way. I drink tea if I'm like, you know what, I've had too much coffee today. I just slow it down. <laughs> Although my like quarantine hobby has been like trying to learn how to make kombucha. And so you have to brew tea to make that. I mean, I think I might have destroyed mine because I have a bad that's going on two weeks and still just tastes like sweet tea. So <laughs> still coffee all the way. Can you share with us some of your main inspirations? Could be your current inspirations, maybe some like long, long lasting inspirations that have always been an inspiration to you? The Bible is a big one. Um, also, Scott Erickson, the artist that me and Hudson met at like his performance, he's a big inspiration. Other than that, um, living in the Southwest, I think I'm super inspired by a lot of the artists that came to the Southwest in like the like 1900s so George O'Keefe is probably a big one who was a painter who came to New Mexico and she was super inspired by the landscapes Donald Judd who was a minimalist if you saw one of his things in the museum is just like cubes like cubes lined up in like very like clean fashion he moved out to the desert because he loved how minimalist it was uh, I think I'm super inspired by them in part by what they're inspired by but also just like their reactions to it I think uh, like my art practice um, comes out of that a lot. Also, a lot of architecture. I went to school originally for architecture. Um, wasn't creative enough for me, but I still uh, love it and I'm super inspired by it. How do you deal with, with roadblocks when you come up against them um, in your making? I have like a thinking mode and a doing mode. Uh, and so if I'm like working and doing and making, I'll probably like do that for two weeks and I'll get stuck. And I'm like, okay, let's get a thinking mode. So I'll like read and research and write. Uh, and then I'll get stuck. I'm like, okay, I guess it's time to go back to doing more. Uh, but always keeping my hands busy. And I feel lucky because I do dabble in so many different pieces of art. Like, I mean, I've been done. I've done a lot of watercolors recently. I have no intentions of showing anybody them because they're not that great. Uh, but I feel like that's that's just progress. And I feel like with art, like progress and just like mulling on something is always better than staying still. That even reminds me. I had this internship one time that was like very high demand. Um, and I would get creative block all the time. And so the start of every morning, whenever I went in for my internship was that I'd set a timer for 10 minutes. And for 10 minutes, I would try to make the worst thing I could. Uh, but like almost every time there was at least something that was like, I didn't know that that could look good because I always thought that looked bad, but I'll take that little piece and just trash the rest of it because that was the plan anyways. Um, and just move it over here and made the other thing look so much better, so. I've never thought about the idea of like creating the worst thing that you possibly can. Like who, as an artist, you're always like, it needs to be perfect, it needs to be amazing. Part of like learning and stretching yourself and growing is, is like starting, changing your mindset and trying something different. And I think like to that point, I'm just super lucky that I have so many people in my community that like push me forward. Like there were at least three people that I had talked to for my art exhibition that I had that if they like wouldn't have told me you need to make this idea happen I would have stopped there I don't watch that much or read that much it's funny I hate fiction like Harry Potter um Star Wars like unpopular opinion I don't I don't watch any of those like but the things that I like keep coming back to are the things that like are like real life but have like again that like piece of wonder in it so like La La Land, I'm like freaking obsessed with that. Secret Life of Walter Mitty, kind of the same thing. I'm just like, it's completely ordinary life. And like these people are just like completely in normal situations, um, but then they're thrown into the magic. So for book, I would say Love Does by Bob Goff, super stereotypical book, but such a good book. I mean, I learned so much of how to just like bring so much like joy and spontaneity into like people's lives that way. That book inspired me to like bring a six pack of beer to my neighbors on the 4th of July. Just just for kicks. I think there's like so much, so much good whenever you can like bring magic into other people's worlds for sure. Any like daily practices so you can share? I mean, my biggest daily practice is I always do my creative work in the morning before work. Um, I used to try to do it after work and I would just be way too exhausted and lazy. 
And uh, because my job is creative too, I've kind of come to this point of like, I want my creative energy, my best creative energy, the one that's fresh, to go to me instead of to this job. Even though I love, even though I love my job, uh, I would rather all that like energy really be with me and with the work that I'm uh, creating and working towards. So like, I'd say from 7:30 to 8:30 every morning is uh, like just my creative time, and that literally looks different. It could be like researching and looking at concepts, like looking at some articles, or it could be doodling, it could be sketching, it could be making a logo for a friend. It like doesn't matter what it is. It's just that's what it is every morning uh, that that time is set aside for me to be creative. So I'm just curious, were you a creative kid? Were you like, how did you get involved in art and what, what, what did you do like as a child and growing up? My mom, uh, while I was growing up, was an art teacher. She was never my art teacher. She was at a different school, but she was an art teacher, which literally just afforded me like going to museums all the time that I hated and having all this art supplies around me. I even think like the things that I gravitated to as a kid were created like Roller Coaster Tycoon 3. You found me there every single day for eight hours a day during the summer. Honestly, like couldn't have had a better education than Roller Coaster Tycoon 3. <laughs> Amen. I mean, I really sucked at art as a kid. Like, I remember, like, having so many, like, chide- sidewalk chalk contests or, like, coloring contests and never winning any of them and, like, crying because, like, my mom's an artist. Like, why can't I do this? In between freshman and sophomore year of high school, after I started taking my face seriously, I felt like my art went somewhere. Um, I feel like part of it is just, like, I had a purpose with it now that I didn't have before, and that drove me to do more and all like compacting on top of each other so yeah I feel like that's kind of been my journey um into art I guess for the last question where do you hope to be in creatively in the next year or even longer than that I actually applied to a grad school this year and uh, didn't get in uh which was uh, really disappointing um and it was like right at the beginning of COVID that I found that out and so this disappointment compounding on top of disappointment with everything that's swirling my head inspiration wise I'm also navigating this like weird place of like I know what a portfolio looks like to get into an art school and uh, it's navigating like compromising for the portfolio not staying true to the art that I want to make versus like leaning completely into what I want to make but potentially not getting to school so it's navigating a lot of that tension is um, what I'm going through and I don't know I think I just want to say that because they're is a piece of failure in it and having to like work to other people's expectations in art practice that um, isn't always set. I wish it was super easy that I could be in the MoMA tomorrow, but um, there's navigating with it. Um, With this like dream of getting into grad school um, and getting a a master's degree in fine arts, uh, on the one hand, just to be able to like do more and practice with it and hopefully have my own studio one day. But also on the other hand, being able to teach art, I would freaking love that. I mean, both my parents are teachers. I almost get more out of inspiring other people than um, like making it for myself. And so I would love to be a teacher. Where can we find your work? Can you like drop your like website, Instagram, all that stuff? My artist name uh, is Delmar kind of. So my website is delmar.work. And then my Instagram is delmar.clark with an E at the end. Uh, Yeah, you can find me there.